So let's fast forward to 2018. In 2018, the Trump administration, Department of Education, issued uh, new sets of rules for notice and comment uh, that dramatically changed the entire concept of due process and, and uh, the way Title IX regulations were working. Elections matter, and there was dramatic change when the Trump administration took over. Betsy DeVos was, uh, uh, was confirmed as, uh, as uh, education secretary. And, um, and then uh, new uh, uh, proposed uh, regulations for Title IX were, um, were uh, published. And uh, essentially what they did was try to correct for the perceived lack of due process under the Obama administration guidelines and the regulations that existed at the time to impose more, I, I mean, I think you would say more court-like uh, proceedings uh, in Title IX investigations. So the, the Trump era regulations really did two things. It narrowed the scope of sexual misconduct that fell within the confines of Title IX. So you had far fewer um, uh, uh, occurrences of sexual misconduct that were actually considered Title IX violations. So it shrunk Title IX. And then two, for those fewer occurrences that did fall within Title IX, the new uh, regulations created a sort of rigid um, investigation framework that involved really uh, some fairly significant uh, due process requirements, such as uh, formalized objections, requirements that all parties um, were represented by attorneys, things of that nature that turned what had been a sort of a college and university centered informal investigation process into what looked like for many of us who do litigation looked more like what you would expect to see in a federal district court. Before, there was no requirement that uh, the parties sort of be in the same room together uh, during a sort of trial-like um, investigation hearing under the Trump administration regulation, so the parties were required to be in the same in the same room, the difficulty on on two fronts was the, the perception was that it was uh, tougher for victims of um, sexual misconduct to be required to sit in the same room with the same individual or individuals that were accused of the sexual misconduct. For colleges and universities, it created the dilemma of having to create a formal process that looked like court proceedings with personnel not really trained to do that kind of work. You know, again, colleges and universities are not courts, they're not administrative tribunals. Uh, and so it created a, you know, a twofold um, uh, dilemma. One, a process that, that felt in some quarters as less favorable to victims of sexual misconduct and sort of more onerous for colleges and universities to try to comply so, so the, the reg new regulations from the Trump administration were, were proposed in 2018. Uh, they sat dormant for a while, public comment, 100,000 uh, public comments on the, on the proposed uh, regulations that finally went into effect in 2020. Colleges and universities were given a, uh, a generous two months to come into compliance with the new regulations, which given the significance of the changes was, uh, you know, was um, a heavy lift for a lot of institutions. And so that uh, stayed as it was until the current administration. Uh, and then things started to change. Mm -hmm.